Silence, in the face of evil, is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak, is to speak. Not to act, is to act. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, murdered by the Nazis. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is probably based in part on Arthur Brooks' uh, poem, Romeus and Juliet. And it's interesting to note that Arthur uh, had a certain view of Romeo and Juliet's love affair. Uh, in his introduction, he says, and to this end, good reader, is the tragical matter written. That's a Romeo and Juliet. To describe unto thee, the audience, who's reading the poem or listening to it, a couple of unfortunate lovers thralling themselves to unhonest desire. Okay, so if I'm running the Boston Marathon and I get thirsty, that's a natural thing, right? And somehow that becomes an unhealthy desire? Arthur's poem makes me feel like I'm stuck in a web. You know, there's something else about uh, Arthur and his poem. Makes me think uh, of media. Poems are a part of media. They get spread around. Today we have political slogans, some of them very nasty. Movies, films, poems, books, the internet. All ways in which hate and angst can be spread. All ways in which airy words can lead to dramatic deaths. Anyway, Arthur's poem continues with Romeo and Juliet when neglecting the authority and advice of parents and friends. Okay, but if your father is like the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan... Well, you don't want to neglect that authority, do you? I would. Well, okay, Arthur continues describing Romeo and Juliet as conferring their principal counsels with drunken gossips and superstitious friars. Okay, so you picture a fast food worker and he's refusing to put the salt on the fries because he thinks pouring salt is a bad omen. Yeah, bad omens. Okay, and Arthur continues with, attempting all adventures of peril, Romeo and Juliet are, for the attaining of their wished lust. Okay, so since when is dating an adventurous peril? And so Arthur describes Romeo and Juliet, that both are using auricular confession. Auricular has to do with hearing. Uh, and auricular confession is supposedly the key of whoredom and treason, so says Arthur's poem. So now if we transport Arthur to Shakespeare's play, and he's watching it, and Romeo is speaking to Juliet, Romeo says, Oh, speak again, bright angel, meaning Juliet, winged messenger of heaven, also meaning Juliet, saying all of that, is the key to whoredom and treason? This sounds totally absurd right there. Yeah, well, wait, there's more. Arthur says, for furtherance of their purpose, abusing the honorable name of lawful marriage to cloak the shame of stolen contracts. This is sounding like 16th century cancel culture. Prince Aeschylus rushes to a Capulet Montague rebellion in the streets of Verona. Where the Capulets and Montagues are giving each other high fives with partisans, foils, and poniards. Yes, uh, she speaks poniards and every word stabs. All right, so this sounds like the prince is pissed. He tells the Caps and Goos, three civil brawls bred of an airy word. Yeah, casual words, airy words, filling up the air. Reminds me of hate speech. You mean free speech? I mean Squirrel Hill, Chapel Hill, and the Charleston Church. Airy words lead to gruesome deeds. Mumsy and Papa's vision of love did not include Benito Mussolini and Adolf Unfittler. So they got married and moved to the safest place on the planet, America. The only apartment they could afford was in Harlem. Not exactly the safest place in America. Papa taught high school back then, and he had to take a switchblade away from a student who was not on speaking terms with another student. 
You're telling me you traded the bullets of the Blitzkrieg for the switchblades of the inner city? Well, you could put it that way. <laughs> I remember Mumsy telling me the story of the 12-inch blade. Is, is, she was teaching handicapped children, and they had one of these kids there who was like 18 years old, and he was having a birthday party, so he got this big cake, and the cake's for everybody there. Only problem is, they can't find the blade that cuts the cake. And since it's such a big cake, it's a big blade. So teachers looking around, they say, where's the blade to cut the cake? How can everyone have cake? And Mumsy sees that there's a kid who's got the uh, blade, and that kid is the 18-year-old kid whose party it's for. Except only problem is he's six foot two, muscled up, and he's got this big 12-inch blade raising it in the air. Not a good idea. So Mumsy goes over to him quickly, takes the kid's wrist, twists it, takes the 12-inch blade out of the kid's hand, and everyone's stunned. They go, because they've never seen any Bruce Lee stuff like that before. Not in person, you just, know, you just don't see that. So fast forward to the next day and Mumsy is teaching her music class and there's a knock on the door. So she goes to the door, opens it, there's a kid there and the kid says, I want to join your class. So Mumsy says, fine, and lets the kid in and continues teaching. Five minutes go by, another knock on the door. She goes to the door, opens it, it's another kid I want to join your class. Fine. Let's him in. Continues teaching. Another five minutes pass. Third knock on the door. She's got to stop her lesson. Goes to the door, opens it up. This time, two teachers and a platoon of students are standing in the doorway. And she says, why, why are all the students, they have their own classes, why are they coming to my class? Littlest one perks up and says, we all want to learn music from the teacher who knows karate. Well, after Harlem and Jamaica, New York, Mumsy moved to uh, Long Island, which is more accurately called Wrong Island. <laughs> Wrong Island? Long Island, New York, America's fastest growing community. Home, place of business, playground for the millions who live in Nassau and Suffolk counties. Just as gold brought settlers to California, something is bringing people to Long Island. To get away from black people. If you ever lived in the city, you'd know what attracts people to Long Island. They all come for the same reasons. Out here, there's room to breathe. And to get away from black people. Long Island is a place of contrasts. Of diversity of both people and places. Yeah, that's about as much diversity as a Klan rally. Long Island doesn't have an uptown or a downtown. There is no other side of the tracks here. So, segregation never happened? Distance and diversity. Total rubbish. The new Long Island, America's fastest growing city. Did you see one Asian person in this promotional video? In the 60s, mixed race marriage was like ordering sushi in a Kentucky fried chicken. Now what the hell is sushi? You just didn't do something like that unless you had a lot of Pepto-Bismol in the uh, pantry. Mumsy and Papa's love was way ahead of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Actually, Papa was at the Lincoln Memorial the day Martin Luther King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. I have a dream. That one day, this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. The best part of being happily mixed married was stumbling across other mixed married couples. Like Al and Pat Carey, the parents of soon to become a diva, Mariah Carey. Really? Yeah, Mariah sang musicals in our living room way before Tommy Mottola had her sing high notes that made some planes divert to a safer airport. Fact is, I was learning how to develop black and white film at Comac High School back then. So I snapped a couple of photos of Mariah Carey singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat in uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Even though Mumsy and Papa raised all four of us here in America, that didn't stop them from returning to Italy for a summer vacation. It was a reprieve from the racism here in America in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, 
2000, 2010, and 2020. This never stops. Uh, it was unbelievable one night. Rocks came crashing through our bedroom window. That was uh, my bedroom window, and I was I had a room with my younger brother. We had bunk beds. Rocks came crashing through. I think we mostly slept through it, except my parents heard that, and they came into the room, put the light on, and was looking out the window and saw the glass all over the floor, found a rock in my brother's bed. Uh, it had hit him, but he sleeps so thoroughly deep that a rock couldn't even wake him up unless it hit him in the head, I guess. But it didn't, thank God. And so my parents cleaned up the glass, shards of glass, which were very dangerous. They get seriously cut by that. When we were children, fourth grade and second grade, mind you. Whoever uh, threw those rocks thought it was a good idea to draw swastikas with uh, red chalk and white chalk on the driveway and used the N-word sparingly on our driveway. And it kept going. Comac was a pretty racist town from my experiences. After her war hero, Papa, died, Mumsy wrote a song to symbolize their love. It was titled in English, The End of Summer, because her life with Papa was a Romeo Juliet style summer. In my experience, mixed marriages too often go from a vision of love to a vision of hate. And the hate has nothing to do with the married couple and their children, but much ado with their neighbors. Just like we experienced the racism in Comac, the Careys experienced their own racism with the torching of their Volkswagen bus. 
The problems of race continue to this day with George Floyd and well beyond. While Papa was a cop, he also felt that black lives matter. I often wonder why does history over countless years repeat this bloody scene between the Capulets and the Montagues? I often ask myself, how can a loving family survive racial hatred thrust upon them like a biting falchion? What does racial hatred do to families of mixed racial heritage? James Baldwin said, the paradox of education is precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. Mi tengo a queste foto e non vedo l'ora che arrivi la visione dell'amore che rovina l'odio che il tempo eterno sembra preferire. Mi fanno sentire a mio agio le foto come il passaggio quieto delle nuvole sulla luna. Queste candele fa tremollare le gambe quando penso alle vite mutilate della guerra. Il guazzabuglio di ricordi scorre su di me come i fiumi di Giuseppe Ungaretti. Come può l'amore sopravvivere il supplizio di uomini che immaginano il loro futuro agli occhi dei nemici morti? Sto cercando in queste foto un amore che si china per ricevere il sole. Un amore come il sonso di Ungaretti, dove si riconosceva la sua anima come una docile fibra dell'universo. Il razzismo americano è il Siene di Ungaretti, e in quel suo torbido fiume americano Mi sono rimescolato e mi sono conosciuto. Come un sole perso tra le nuvole minacciose, la mia cultura mi ha gettato come spazzatura nei fiumi del razzismo americano. Ma le foto sono il mio petoruto contro gli orrori dell'odio che vengono trasmessi da una generazione all'altra attraverso voci mediate dalla tecnologia. Ora che è notte, la mia vita sembra un'ombra della guerra in cui le candele detengono la chiave al nostro futuro. Se l'incitamento all'odio diventerà mai libertà di parola, allora i nostri fiumi scorreranno sempre rossi. Non mi tengo a quest'albero di vita abbandonato alla volontà di uomini che preferiscono il denaro alla volontà di Dio per amarci gli uni gli altri come eterni uguali.
I remember a general principle that Mumsy and Papa taught us as children. No matter how bad it gets, there are always good people nearby. And there were good people nearby. Many were Jewish, many were Italian, some we had no idea what background, ethnic background they came from. But we do know that in these modern days of George Floyd, there are always good people nearby. I am very happy that the fact that the police officers joined the protest group as a mother of a former retired police officer, I'm proud of all of you. And so, when we compare the Capulets to the Montagues in Shakespeare's day, in Romeo and Juliet, we're concerned mainly with two families on equal footing. But today, if we were to think of the Capulets and the Montagues, these two families are not on equal footing. If we consider the rich folks to be the Capulets and the Montagues to be so-called minorities, these are the paintings that would better fit today's Capulets v. Montagues. Let us think about the Montagues and how today's Capulets, rich Capulets, might think of the Montagues. Here we have a painting in which Montagues, so wise, so young, shall ne'er enjoin the throne. In Italiano si dice, Montecchi, così saggi, così giovani, non ingiungeranno mai al trono. When we apply Shakespeare's Montagues and Capulets to today, we need to think more deeply about how the Capulets differ from the Montagues. Congruing Capulets need not be kin nor kind. In Italiano, Capuletti congruenti non devono necessariamente essere parenti né gentili. Romeo died by a pocket heavy poison. The poison that killed Papa was something else. Racism or crazyism. He was a cop straight up. Then a war vet. He took all the stress from work. Yo, you and green lives matter. But black lives are sadder. Because your job is in the skin. Or brown, the taste is all good. His hands and face was muddy, so they said, teach black studies. He did march to the rhythm of MLK, which to them was not okay. Faded, though he made it to the promised land at last. 
Dead. Black life stressing, blue life stressing, green life stressing, power was all free stressing. Evil can't be evil.